right, everyone, good morning. Welcome back to my channel. This is gonna be day one of D23 Expo. I was able to kind of walk around yesterday and sp scope everything out as it was getting set up, but today's gonna be my first official day inside and sharing everything with you guys here. So I'm gonna try to do videos every single day of the Expo and show you everything that's going on. Today, I'm gonna be um, at attending the SEA, the Society of, Adventures, uh, Society of Explorers and Adventurers panel um, just after the Legends panel kicks off this morning. Um, and then I'm gonna head into the show floor, hopefully, fingers crossed, get into Mickey's of Glendale shop and just show you kind of what's going on and, and the lay of the land at D23 Expo. There's a lot of questions I'm hoping to answer that tons of people have asked me about like water bottles and um, you know, early entry and where you go for certain things if you have reserved seating. So I'm gonna check all that out for you guys, answer as many questions as I can. And then on this video, you can put comments of additional questions you might have for Saturday and Sunday, because I'm hoping to put this video out late Friday night so that you guys can watch it. And then I'll do another one on Saturday and on Sunday. And of course, Sunday being the big day with parks. Um, but it's an exciting morning already. Uh, I'm heading over to Expo now from the hotel. I'm staying here at the Hojo Anaheim. Uh, and I'm gonna head on over right now, uh, grab some breakfast on the way. I'm not waiting for Legends panel, so I didn't feel like I needed to get there super early as I would for like the parks day. Um, but the people that were there for Legends did get there pretty early. We saw some people at 4.30 in the morning. So, um, but um, I'm headed there now, so let's get this day started. All right, so question number one was, can you park at Toy Story parking lot? And the answer to that is yes. I'm actually here at Toy Story lot right now. Although I do have a reservation for Disneyland today, I'm not sure if that matters. The cast member did ask me if I'm going to Disneyland, which I am later today. Um, and I told them I was later on in the evening. Um, so if you can make a reservation at Disneyland, do it. Um, but keep in mind, if the cast member does turn you away um, at the Toy Story parking lot because you're just coming here to park for the expo, that may be the case. Although it seems like from what I've seen so far on the street that D23 Expo parking at Anaheim Convention Center is a lot less crowded than it has been in years past. So um, hopefully that's an improvement if you guys are parking there and it's a little bit closer, um, but I guess it's a success over here at Toy Story parking lot. I was able to park here for the Expo and I'm headed on in now. And for those that were asking, it did open just after seven from what I could tell, maybe a little bit before seven o'clock for the normal Disneyland opening. Um, so keep in mind that that's like when you're planning on arriving, if you're planning on arriving before that, for any of the earlier presentations, queues that set up around 4.30, then you're probably gonna wanna park at either the convention or one of the nearby hotels that's offering public parking. All right, so I just got to security and bag check. And then once you head inside, you can line up for your respective panel or um, if you're just going to the general show floor and waiting for your virtual queue um, for shopping later on, you kind of just have to go through this first. Um, and I'll tell you kind of what they check for and what they don't check for. Cause I know a lot of people were asking about water, food and, and other things like that. All right, so we have about five minutes until they open the show floor at 9 a.m. Unfortunately, I got here a little late, so I'm waiting outside instead of inside. All right, we're headed in. Finally inside to the air conditioning. All right, so we're headed into the SEA panel, Society of Adventurers and Explorers. It's going to be this morning at 10.30, and it's the other main panel besides um, Disney Legends. So I'm hoping we find out a lot of stuff about parks in this panel. We'll find out. So 
what is it? You know, it's, it's the idea of it is it's this group that's been around in our storytelling from the early 1500s, you know, the age of great explorer. Hey, Team Winter and Expo. I'm Michael Majewski, our director here with Walt Disney Imagineering in Anaheim. Welcome to Disneyland Resort. We've got a lot of great dots and society of explorers and adventurers. My personal favorite being the paddle wall over the tropical hideaway. So uh, come on and join me. Welcome to the Tropical Hideaway, which, as you know, is the exotic trader's marketplace in the very heart of Adventureland. What you may not know is it's also frequented by members of the Society of Explorers and Adventurers, and they've left behind a handful of artifacts for us to explore. You're going to see some names you're sure to recognize, like Harrison Hightower, Henry Mystic, or even Dr. Albert Falls. But you're also going to see some of the lesser-known members of the SEA, like Sango Shio or Chef Tanaji. And of course, we've got a great society of explorers and adventurers story to tell here at the Jungle Cruise. The current owner of the Jungle Navigation Company is Alberta Falls, granddaughter to one of the most famous members of the SEA, Dr. Albert Falls. Now, when Alberta took over the Jungle Navigation Company in 1931, she had this map commissioned, celebrating her grandfather's 1911 expedition around the jungle rivers of Adventureland. So what you can see here is that when Alberta took over ownership of the company, the second A in her name is slightly different than the first because it used to say Albert Falls, and now she made it her own by adding that second A. <laughs> it looks like some beekeeping supplies have arrived here at the boathouse, and I think I know who they're for. Welcome to the entomological retreat of SEA member Dr. Kanchanuske. Being a close friend of Alberta's, she's allowed him to set up shop here at the upstairs of the Jungle Cruise boathouse with his bug collection on display for all to see. Only our sharpest eyed guest is going to see this SEA clue. In Alberta's office, she's received a package from Mary and Pleasure, which means we have the daughter of one SEA member sending a gift to the granddaughter of another. There's lots more to see at the SEA on the Jungle Cruise, but no visit to Adventureland we complete without a trip to the Bengal Barbecue. Here we've got a reproduction of the portrait of the SEA in 1899 that's featured in the Tower of Terror in Tokyo Disney Sea. And you can cast your eyes upward for a glimpse of the correspondence box belonging to Professor Flower Hill, the SEA's intrepid aviator. Of course, our Society of Explorers and Adventurers story doesn't end in Adventureland. Come to Frontierland to learn more about Barnabas T. Bullion and Jason Chandler looking for clues in and around Big Thunder Mountain. Next up, we're headed into Mickey's of Glendale. I got my virtual queue this morning at 6 a.m and we can go right on in and start shopping. I didn't have to wait at all. Just to give you an example, last year I waited two and a half hours to get into this store. All right, so inside the Mickey's of Glendale store, you're gonna find things based off of the Imagineering Pavilion um, and also just general Imagineering merchandise. They have a lot of their 70th anniversary merchandise over here. And all this is Walt Disney Imagineering exclusive. Uh, they have a whole Sorcerer Mickey line over here. Some of the exclusive collections they have, of course, are Disney Paper Parks, um, which is basically like kind of the hand-drawn cutouts. And then we have uh, the Muppets Haunted Mansion line, which has been really popular with people in here. Tons of different things. I'm just going to stand here and we'll take turns looking. Look at that onesie. A lot of Muppet Studio stuff. So if you're a Muppets fan, definitely come over here to Mickey's of Glendale. Muppets Haunted Mansion. And then back here, coming tune is the uh, is the stuff for Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway, including this El Capitoon Spirit jersey. And on the back, it says El Capitoon Theater. Not a fan of the color on that one. Lots of Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway merchandise, including a train whistle, the attraction poster, some patches here, including Chuby. All from the attraction. They've got little notebooks, things like that. Here's a dad hat here. And the El Capitoon Theater t-shirt. And again, that's gonna be the Disneyland version of Mickey Minnie's Runaway Railway. All little Easter eggs from Mickey Minnie's Runaway Railway. And then over here, they actually have some Duffy stuff.
including a puzzle of the brand new Lena Bell, who's the brand new Duffy and Friends debuting. And then they've got all the different lanyards for all the different characters, but they don't have Lena Bell. They have Olu and Shelly Mae, Gelatoni. This really cool print, which has the Dreamfinder and a bunch of other long lost characters. This stuff's actually pretty popular. But most of the really, really popular things have been um, the items that are themed to the Imaginary Pavilion, which is called Wonderful World of Dreams. There's two different t-shirts. They look the same at first glance, but the black one actually has writing on the like side of it. You can see right here. It has Walt Disney's speech on the side of it. Whereas the white one, let me show you, has it on the back side. And then they also have this sweater, which is right here, which has Walt's quote as well and sort of that rainbow colored writing. And then the statue of the Dreamer statue, which is going in Epcot and is actually on display inside the Imaginary Pavilion. But that's a quick look at what's inside Mickey's of Glendale main store. Mickey's of Glendale main store. This is not the pin store or the expo shop upstairs. This is just the main shop. So the checkout process was actually pretty smooth. Um, they have mobile checkout, just like they do at like World of Disney and other things like that. But uh, because of that, it made the regular checkout line really short. So I just did regular checkout and it took me five minutes. So definitely a big change from years past. Mickey's of Glendale, like I mentioned, last expo was a two and a half hour wait at most points. And then you waited another like 30 or 40 minutes just to check out. So better improvement this year using the virtual checkout huge, huge advantage. All right, so next up is actually the Disney Pixar panel this evening for the studio showcase. And that's where we're headed now over at Hall D23 around 3.15 or 3.30. All right, so it's been an overwhelming, hectic day for sure. I was able to do uh, the SEA panel, some shopping, some dining, uh, some exploring on the show floor. And now I'm headed to Hall D23 for the evening presentation of the Pixar Disney uh, Studios presentation number one. Not the one with Marvel and uh, Lucasfilm, that's tomorrow. Um, but this is gonna be the Disney and animation Pixar uh, panel. So thankfully I was able to get a plus one for this one and I'm headed into the events and it's gonna be exciting because I hear maybe we're gonna get some really cool sneak peeks, uh, potentially uh, the Little Mermaid. So we'll see how that goes. I'm sure you guys will see it live on Twitter when it all happens. Um, but uh, it's been a long day, but it's still not ending. The expo closes at seven, so there's a lot more to do. Disney films you would like to learn more about. All right, so we made it into the Disney live action and Pixar Disney animation, and we're uh, seated down now. So I can't film during this, so I'll talk about it after. So wow, that wraps up the evening. The expo has officially closed at 7 p.m., and we're gonna be back tomorrow, but we're not doing the live action panel tomorrow. We're actually gonna be just chilling and enjoying the show floor, doing all the shopping that we can, um, because Parks and Resorts is Sunday. So, um, but I'm gonna do a little recap at the hotel room, talking about the movie panel that we watched as well, because it's just been so hectic. I haven't had a chance to stop. So that's where we're gonna end the video, uh, but I'll see you in a little bit. All right, everyone, I promised you a recap back at the hotel and I'm here back at the Hojo here in Anaheim. And man, what a long day at D23 Expo. Um, I got there just before, or just after 7 a.m. and there was a long wait outside in the morning. Uh, but I wanted to bring up one thing. I told you I'd be answering some questions in this video. One of the biggest questions was about water, actually. All the rules at D23 Expo said that you couldn't have water or any outside drink or food brought in. But as we know, today was almost 100 degrees, just as every other day this week as well. Um, so they were being really lax on this rule, which I thought was great. I was kind of worried about it too because I knew there'd be some outside waiting, so I didn't want to have no water. So I brought it as a gamble and they said we could totally bring it in. So if you are coming in here today this weekend, make sure to bring water with you. They're totally okay with it. At least they were on Friday today. Uh, but I kind of want to show you a little bit of the haul from today 
and then talk about the movie panel like I mentioned. Uh, so when you first walk in, of course, you're gonna get your D23 Expo eco bag. Um, it's got the Disney 100 Years of Wonder logo on it and then the Expo logo for this year on the back. And you also get your program guide, which is really gonna just be your schedule and like the map of the show floor. So everything else is gonna be in the D23 Expo app, which you use a ton. And maybe I'll talk more about that tomorrow because we're gonna be doing all the show floor tomorrow. Um, and then I got this little free handout from Disney Wish booth. It's all really I had a chance to do. Oh, I forgot this little lanyard here comes with um, the, the stuff that you get when you first come in. So that's kind of what I got when I first came in. But I was gonna show you a little bit of the haul, the stuff I got today. Um, so I went into the Mickeys of Glendale booth, which I showed you earlier in the video. And I actually got uh, this Chibi, uh, or Chubi, I think it's Chubi, uh, character patch from the attraction Mickey and Minnie's Runway Railway. Since it is coming to Disneyland, there was a whole Mickey and Minnie's Runway Railway section in Mickey's of Glendale talking all about the merchandise. Um, and like, and it also had El Capitoon themed merchandise since that's our version rather than Walt Disney World's. So we had a Chuby patch. Um, we got a, a Sorcerer Mickey 70 years uh, of Imagineering patch. And these are for Ashley from Mouse Vibes. She really wanted these. This is also hers as well too. This is the Imagineering 70th 100 or 70th logo. Um, and it's like a denim little hat here. This was $20 in Mickey's of Glendale as well. All three of these items were from Mickey's of Glendale. And then the last item I got there, which was for me, um, was the t-shirt for the Wonderful World of Dreams, which was the Disney Parks, Resorts and Experiences panel or, uh, well, it is the panel, and then also the Imagineering booth. And it has a little quote on the side back from Walt Disney here. Um, it says, Dreamer's quote, um, and they're going to have this at the uh, new Walt statue that's going to be located in Epcot, which they had inside the pavilion. So got to check that out. Definitely wanted to get a shirt for that. So that was from Mickey's of Glendale Main Store. That was my all for Main Store. But next, I wanted to talk about these, actually. Um, and these were the poster giveaways that we got from the movie panel that I was in for Disney's live action, Pixar and Disney animation. So the first one here, I'll put this one down, is going to be from the movie Strange World. This movie actually comes out this year. We got to see uh, a really big portion of the movie and all the celebrities that were on stage. Stage It does feature uh, Dennis Quaid. They had um, Jake Gyllenhaal and Lucy Liu as part of the cast. They were all on the stage. This comes out this year um, in 2022, and this is gonna be Disney Animation's 61st feature animated film. Uh, and then the next poster that we got, and of course these all say D D23 Expo exclusive on the bottom here. The next one was for Pixar's Elemental. Um, and this movie actually, um, I believe also comes out, I think it comes out next year. I'm actually not quite sure on that. I'll put it on the screen afterward, uh, but this movie is basically um, all about the elements, water, earth, fire, and uh, air. And this is Element City. Um, and the, basically it's talking about Ember, um, I forgot his name, Ember and the water guy, but it's basically fire and water. And it's their relationship building together and their total opposite elements. So in like in a world where they wouldn't be accepted because of how they are as opposite elements, it's basically like their connection story. So it was really, really cool actually. Very beautiful graphics. This movie was awesome. But overall, the movie panel was great. We, we saw so many things. We saw uh, the first ever teaser um, and the basically the segment from The Little Mermaid, we saw part of your world, uh, the entirety of the segment. And then they showed us the teaser, which they then showed online for everyone at home. Uh, we saw the Snow White live action movie with those celebrities as well. We saw a first look at Disney's uh, Disenchanted, which is the sequel to Enchanted. We saw um, the extended trailer for Hocus Pocus 2, which comes out this year as well. And just a ton of other movies. But I would say the one I was looking forward to the most was probably either The Little Mermaid as well as... Um, the uh, elemental movie I actually just really liked this movie and, and what they showed from it as well but the big 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 movie that they really wanted to, everyone to take away with it was like the headliner at the end of the whole panel and they actually had someone singing um with a live performance from a song on the movie was called wish actually and the premise of the movie is essentially like if you look at all the cartoons in the past like princess tiana 
um, you know, Pinocchio, When You Wish Upon a Star. Basically, all these different princesses and characters are always wishing upon a star, right, for some sort of some, something in the movie. So they were like, what's the origin of that star that they're all wishing on? And so this is basically the premise of that movie, Wish. Um, and it's in this fictional town, um, but they really wanted to make this movie kind of harken back to the old style of Disney animation mixed with current style. Uh, and then with that also being like a classic musical. So you've got like your, you know, Beauty and the Beast, your Little Mermaid has the musical songs in it as well as the regular movie. Um, so that was kind of the whole premise of this movie. And it's going to be their uh, Disney 100 animation movie. So this is going to be their 62nd feature length animated film. Um, and it's going to be next year in 2023 for their Disney 100 year. So it's a very, very special and important movie to them. Uh, and they were all like really big on it. Uh, they actually had something in the show floor for photo opportunities um, available for this that they unveiled right when we were in the panel. I didn't get a chance to check it yet, but we'll see that tomorrow in tomorrow's video. But that about wraps up today. I'm rambling here. Uh, so thank you so much for watching, for listening. If you haven't already, leave a comment below about something you liked at D23 Expo or if you went, what was your favorite thing? Uh, and then additionally, uh, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. More D23 content coming, lots more things. So thank you so much for watching and we'll see you tomorrow. Thank you.